Flying cars are awesome. Flying cars are terrible. Trace and Anthony here for D News, and last week, Terrafusia announced that they're beginning to work on their second flying car prototype, the TFX. Which is interesting because they're still about two years away from completing the transition, which mm -hmm, is supposed mm -hmm. to be their first model. <laughs> but I've got to say, the TFX looks way more awesome and practical than the transition, but I still cannot get behind flying cars yet. I don't yet. know, I don't know. The transition is pretty cool, and it's kind of like a plane that can drive. Ugh, it's that is been the problem. approved by the FAA, it uses regular gas, and if they get the proper approval, it's only going to take 20 hours hours of flight experience well, to use it. Well, 20 hours of flight experience is the same as getting a private pilot's license. Actually, I think it's a student license, but mm -hmm. the cost of licensing to have a plane, because flying cars right now are not flying cars. They're right. driving planes. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a plane that folds up and drives around. So first of all, you have to get all these medical examinations and stuff to be a pilot. It's mm -hmm. not just like a car where anybody can drive a car. Right. You have to be in pretty good like physical condition. Plus, those hours of training, that 20 hours, that's at $140 to $300 an hour of training. Right. So that's an expensive license. Yeah, it's expensive, but you know the cost of owning a horse mm -hmm. was less than the cost of owning a car when that came out. And that sure. still became more and more popular because there was some kind of innovation, progress, and advancement to owning the car and versus it was, the And horse. that was a slow curve. We right. got to remember that that's a yeah. slow curve that Over happened. Over time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, you know, the cost of insurance, the cost of safety in a driving plane <laughs> is really expensive because to have a small plane, you're talking about $4,000 a year of insurance, plus right. a, like a lot of additional personal liability and stuff like that right. that you don't have to have, like at a high level for a plane. I've got nothing on that one. Uh, yeah. I got you, you definitely win that Well, because plus it also, <laughs> it's going to have to be insured as a plane and, and a, a car. car. It's both. It's, it's both. a hybrid insurance plan. Yeah. Ooh. And then there's fuel. Fuel is expensive in a plane, man. It is man. expensive. But you know, there are planes like the uh, Transition that uses regular unleaded gasoline. It says it gets like 20 miles per gallon. 20 miles per gallon when you're traveling 400 miles an hour? Is, you're gonna burn that's, that's through that so fast. Okay, that, does, that Plus, sounds better on paper. <laughs> we have to remember that when you land, you're still using the airplane engines to drive. Uh, regulations, too, are gonna be a problem here. Yeah, uh, and nobody wants the responsibility for those regulations no. at all. The FAA does not like the idea of flying cars. OSHA doesn't care, the they don't EPA want it. The EPA hates it. Nobody. Uh, and the, here's the thing, small planes cannot fly under a thousand feet in the air in yeah. residential areas right now. Yikes. So think about that. And they can't fly under 500 feet in the air ever unless they're taking off or landing. So Jeez. these dreams of kind of like whizzing Just by the top of a building. going down where you want to go, not going to happen. That can't work. There are, I mean, pretty specific regulations with automobiles as well, though. Sure. We're, we're just used to seeing those because, you know, there are speed limits, there are gasoline requirements, there are weight requirements, seat belts. I mean, all these different things we've just slowly built throughout years of using automobiles. But now, but cool let's things, talk right? about some other things, though, some good things. Land use, mm -hmm. fewer cars on the road and more up in the air, especially once you get higher up and away from you know, residential areas, it's gonna be like back to the future. Where they're going, they don't need roads. Sure, but let's talk about the congestion and the crowding of the sky that happens when, when you have all these people in. And let's also talk about space requirements. Okay. okay? You need a thousand feet of runway for a small plane times everyone that's in a flying car. Whoa. So you're still using a lot of roads. Right. Plus, you're probably, with air traffic control, not going to be able to land within like five miles of where you're trying to go. Well, I, you know, yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but traffic congestion's already kind of a big deal. Sao mm -hmm. Paulo, for example, has 20 million people, six million buses, cars, motorbikes, rush hour there sucks. Yes. So Helmart is a sky taxi service that will fly you over traffic. Sao Paulo cool. is on board, they've got a ton of helipads, and they take off and land almost every minute. But they don't have enough of those sky taxis and enough of those helipads to simulate an entire city of people having these things. No, no, it's really just for executives and people that can afford the like $400 and up ticket. Exactly, and that's the other thing, is like FAA regulations say the, di the safe distance between small aircraft is 500 feet. Right. So you think road congestion is dangerous, like... Yeah, but you know, that's not that different from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration's recommendations here in the States for vehicles. Five to six seconds of space at 70 miles per hour. You're looking around 500 feet. Bam. Right, right but that's horizontal. I'm talking 500 feet vertical required oh, between oh. each small aircraft. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think of that. The real kicker, I think, is computerized flying cars. Yes. So here, yeah, here's where we agree. I think flying cars, as they stand right now, 
as driving planes. Yeah, not so great. Bad idea. Yeah. Bad. Yeah, you're, I'm, I'm going to go with you but on that But as one. we get to the future, you know, we're talking about things like self-driving cars right now. Right. The Google car. They're already legal in California, Nevada, and Florida. Mm -hmm. And so as we get two-dimensionally, we're covering all of this space with computerized cars. And I don't know why we couldn't go three-dimensionally. Oh, we totally could. And if you look at things like uh, personal drones right now, things like the DJI drone, these, these drones that you can buy and attach cameras to, mm -hmm. they have a lot of really sophisticated internal balance mechanisms that could start to mitigate Right. How hard Pilot it is to error. fly. Yeah. Because you're using your feet to fly a plane for some things. You're using your yoke, you're pulling and pushing and turning all at the same time. Yeah. So that, plus airspeed and all of your, your other equipment. It's not easy. So the smarter the flying car actually gets, the, the more likely the we're going to have it. That's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. What do you guys think of flying cars? <laughs> Let us know down below. Make sure you subscribe for more D News. Thanks not, for watching. They're not good. I still think they're good. They'll Just be good. They're some, not good. Someday they're going to be good. Yeah.